The iPad is an essential part of my daily carry, but what apps do I have on this device? Let's find out. Hello and welcome back to Mark Ellis Reviews and thank you for subscribing if you have. And if you haven't subscribed, the button is, you know where it is. I've been an iPad user since 2010. Yes, I bought the very first one. Everyone thought I was mad that I bought this kind of big iPhone thing, but it was worth it because look how far we've come. And while I've made my feelings on iPadOS clear, they need to do more with it, I do rely on this device for my business. It's my note taker, my content consumption device, and my trusted YouTube companion. But what you wanna know is what's on my iPad. This video isn't sponsored by any of the apps I've mentioned. None of them have seen this video before it went out. They haven't told me to say anything about those apps. These are my genuine recommendations. So let's get into it. We'll start with a bunch of apps that I use every single day, either to get stuff done or to catch up on what's going on in my business. The first one is my email client, which is Spark. Now I've spoken about Spark quite a bit in previous videos. It's my favorite email client bar none. And email clients you can't get that excited about. Apple Mail is fine. I've used lots of other email clients. They're all, they're all pretty good, let's be honest. But for whatever reason, I've stuck with Spark. One of the biggest reasons for that is because whenever you set up a new device with Spark, you log in once with one of your email accounts and all of your settings come across. So if I get a new iPad, like this iPad mini, I can very quickly get my email up and running. The second app I use on a daily basis is Fantastical, which is a brilliant calendar app. Again, there's nothing wrong with the calendar app, the default calendar app on the iPad. I have just used Fantastical for a number of years. And one, I like supporting developers like that. And two, it's just a very nice looking calendar app. It's got some lovely features like the quick entry feature that you can use. And what I find with email clients and calendar apps is that once you've got one that works, it's easy to stick with it. And that's what I've done with Spark and Fantastical. So those are the two fairly boring things that I use every day. The third one is BBC Weather. For some reason, Apple still doesn't give us a weather app on the iPad. I have no idea why. It's such an odd omission. If you know why, please explain. I don't know, I just don't get it. But that means we have to go with something different. Now I've tried Carrot Weather, Dark Sky, which isn't a thing anymore, I don't think. But BBC Weather, if you live in the UK, is pretty much, I think, the best weather app. I also have Google Maps installed. I tend to use that more than Apple Maps. I've had some bad experiences with Apple Maps where it's taken me down the wrong road. And I don't know, I just like the fact that Google Maps integrates, obviously, with the Google services. Uh, but also, it just feels a bit more trustworthy. And lastly, in terms of daily stuff is Things. And Things is a to-do list app. And there are millions of these on the App Store. Just tons of them, but a little bit like Spark and Fantastical, I've been a Things user for quite a long time. I kind of flirted with um, OmniFocus for a little while. That's fine, it's a bit overkill for what I need, but Things is this beautifully designed app. It's got just the right number of features, and yeah, it just helps me get stuff done every day, and that is absolutely a lifesaver. On to note taking, I talked about the brilliance of the iPad mini when it comes to taking notes. And if you combine this with the Apple Pencil, it's just such a combination. But you do need a decent notes app to work with. And personally, I use Notability. It's very clean, there's not too much going on the screen. I love the fact you can have this little palette of your favorite pens and colors wherever you want on the screen. That's very useful, I use that all the time. It's got good folder management, all that kind of stuff. It does sync between your devices so you can have Notability on your phone. I think on your Mac as well. It's just great. And I do use Apple Notes. I'll leave a link above to my little video where I go through Apple Notes and how I use it on the Mac, but I do use Apple Notes on the iPad as well. And the reason I use Apple Notes as well as Notability is because I have loads of stuff stored in Notes over many, many years of putting stuff into it. So rather than move all that into something else, I just leave it in Notes. And it's just handy to have that stuff on my iPad whenever I need it. The other reason I use Notes is during my weekly newsletter. If you're not signed up to that yet, I'll put a link in the description but when I'm sitting here doing my kind of behind the scenes thing for my newsletter subscribers, I'll have my iPad just out of shot here with notes open with just a few things I wanna go through for that particular newsletter. The only thing I don't like Apple Notes for is its integration with the Apple Pencil, weirdly. That's where for me, notability is far better. Right, when it comes to content consumption, I had to make a list of the things I use for that. So the first one is YouTube. I'm a big YouTube viewer, as you might guess, so I watch most of my YouTube content on the iPad mini. But also Kindle, I've got back into reading Kindle books recently, again, because of this iPad mini, because this is such a good size, let's take that off, because this is such a useful little, kind of almost Kindle-like size, 
I don't know, it's just kind of got me back into reading books on it. So the Kindle app is now a firm favorite on here. And also when it comes to reading, I use the Apple News app as well. That's my kind of go-to news source, even though I don't tend to read or watch much news these days because it's too depressing. And then in terms of music, although I don't use my iPad for music that often, there's three apps that I do have actually. So one of them is Apple Music, obviously. The other one is Spotify. I tend to flip between the two. And the reason I have both music apps is because Apple Music is great. I like it, no problem at all. But I do prefer the playlists on Spotify. So that's why I've kept the two subscriptions. The other music app which I use quite regularly, which is on my iPad ninth generation over here, is the BBC Sounds app which is superb. It's the, probably the easiest way in the studio to get the radio, for instance, but they have loads of podcasts and pre-recorded shows. It's a superb app from the BBC. The BBC do some really good stuff with both their website and also the apps they produce. And it's just, a, I love it, it's great. BBC Sounds, I use that probably as much as any other media consumption app out there. Next up is password management. And I used to be an Apple Keychain user for many, many years, but about two or three months ago, I switched over completely to 1Password. And it really is superb. Apart Apart from storing passwords, it does let you store pretty much anything in there from notes to software licenses, all sorts of things basically. So I've put pretty much everything that I hold dear into one password and I use it all the time on the iPad. And the latest update, which integrates it much better into Safari, for instance, has made a huge difference to the way that one password operates on the iPad. So again, nothing wrong with Apple Keychain. If you're using that, it's great, keep on using it. If you're not using it or if you're a bit fed up with it for whatever reason, I'd recommend checking out one password. Now, when it comes to brand management for this YouTube channel, there are several apps that I rely on constantly on the iPad. The first one is Notion. It's hard to explain what Notion is. It's a kind of basically a database app and you can turn it into pretty much anything you want. So people use it for project planning, for to-do list management, for personal wikis, for knowledge bases. You can basically customize it and tweak it to your heart's degree. And I've set mine up to manage all of the content for this brand. So all of the videos, all my blogs, my Skillshare classes, more on those very soon, the eight or 16 podcast, all my review units, the financials of the business, all of it goes through Notion. And the best thing about Notion on the iPad, a little bit like the iPhone, is that it's always with me. So if I'm out working somewhere or sat on the couch at night, I can very quickly pick this up and put any ideas that come into my head into Notion. Next up is YouTube Studio. In all honesty, I use that more often on my iPhone, but it is nice to have it on the iPad as well. And any YouTuber will tell you that you spend far too much time going into YouTube Studio and checking your stats. Hands up, I do it all the time. I check my subscriber levels. I look at the performance of videos. It's just, it's addictive. You know, we all want our channels to grow and it's nice to see those numbers going up. And it's a great app. I think the only problem with it is that running it on the iPad mini, it isn't fully optimized for the screen, which is a bit annoying, but you still get all the features. And more importantly, everything I need to know about my channel is just here all the time. We then have Medium, which is, if you're not familiar, a huge blogging platform. Chances are you've read stuff on Medium without even realizing it. I've got my own presence on there now. I've had it there for the last 18 months. It's doing very well, which is fantastic. And I do post blogs on there every day. Again, I'll put a link in the description so you can check them out. But I use Medium on the iPad for two reasons. The first one is to actually read Medium. I'm a paying member myself. But the second one is to check the stats of my stories and just to see how each one of those is performing at any given time. I've also got Twitter on here. Don't tend to use it that much, but that is part of the brand management. I need to keep an eye obviously on incoming mentions, messages and that sort of stuff. So occasionally, rather than using my iPhone, I'll use Twitter on the iPad. And lastly, in terms of brand management, I use a brilliant app called Day One. And Day One is a journaling app. It's very well known. It was bought recently, or I think earlier this year, by the people behind WordPress. So it's garnered quite a lot of attention. And rightly so, it's beautifully designed, very easy to use, and very addictive as well. If you're into journaling, or if you wanna get into journaling, it's one of the best apps to use for that process. However, what I've been doing for the last few weeks is using Day One to plan my business. I do this every year. I always start, not a new business plan, but I start planning ahead for the year to come. And Historically, I would have used Evernote for that or even occasionally a Word document. But I suddenly thought recently, why not use day one? I tend to write business plans like journals anyway, so it, it just made sense. Day one is a very, very important part of this iPad. 
I wanted to quickly mention photo editing because I do have Lightroom installed on this iPad. I've been using the iPad for photo editing for quite a long time now, thanks to the pencil and that beautiful retina screen. It's just a great way to edit photos. And Lightroom on the iPad is just brilliant. I've got an Adobe subscription, so I have the cloud storage. So what I basically do is take the photo, upload it via my Mac, that goes into the Adobe cloud, instantly appears on the iPad and I can just get cracking wherever I am, if I'm sat on the couch or if I'm here or wherever I am, get the iPad and even on the iPad mini actually, using this to edit photos, it's just brilliant. You can very quickly triage through your photos and delete things that you don't want, all that sort of stuff. But the actual editing with this is a lot of fun. I recommend it. If you're a photographer or whether you're amateur or you're professional, try out your iPad for photo editing. It's absolutely brilliant. Lastly, I do have some more boring business stuff on here, which is worth mentioning. The first one is Outlook. Now, I never thought I'd say this, but Microsoft Outlook on the iPad is fantastic. In fact, I'd argue that it's a better email client than Spark. The only reason I don't use Outlook completely is, again, because I've got so used to Spark for everything else. So I use Outlook for one particular contract. So that's on here. Teams is on here as well, sorry. Uh, but I'm quite a fan of Teams. I think the way it kind of integrates with the whole 365 suite is actually quite sweet. And lastly, I have some world clocks set up as widgets on one of the pages of my iPad. And that is because I work with people across the world. So it's just nice to know what time it is in their neck of the woods. So guys, that is what's on my iPad. It's not massively exciting, I admit, but hopefully you found it quite interesting. But I'm curious, what is your favorite iPad app or your favorite, let's say, what's your favorite top three iPad apps? Let me know in the comments. Now, if you've still got some time and you'd like to know what's on my iPhone, keep watching for a link to that video. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.